This video has been brought to you by DataVinci Analytics Agency. Hello everyone, this is Tanmay. And today in this video, I'll be talking about data elements in Adobe Launch. And I'll be covering the following topics listed here. First, we'll, we'll be starting off with a brief introduction about Adobe Launch that is also called data collection now. And then we'll be covering what is a data element, what all are the types of data elements that are available to us. And definitely at the end of that video, we'll also be covering how we can create a data element by ourselves. So this, going, this video is going to be very simple. And let's take up the first question for the day. What is Adobe Launch? So it's nothing but a tag management solution that can take care of our analytical and marketing tags that are necessary to empower our digital ecosystem. So brands these days tend tends to uh, integrate a bunch of services or even applications for transmitting data to various uh, destinations. So Adobe came up with a variety of extension that are both Adobe as well as non-Adobe uh, that can be used to collect unified data and then transmit them to multiple streams to multiple destinations as we as we want as per our use case so that's when adobe launch is the super tool that we use as a tag manager another popular example of a tag manager is google's tag manager but in this video we are going to cover adobe launch adobe launch comprises of three main components uh, that is rules data elements and extensions so what are data elements in Adobe Launch? So it is nothing but the building blocks of the entire digital tracking setup. We use it to collect data, organize data, and even uh, these are the named memory locations that are actually transmitted at the end of the, of the hit that is being made to a particular service. The best part about the data element is we can create a data element once and use it in any number of rules, any number of extensions that we want while configuration. So the concept of reusability is the key here. It saves a lot of time, energy, as well as leads to the efficient usage of the resources. And talking about an example of what can be a data element, what is a data element in terms of an example. So let's take up an take up a component of the website that is page info variables. That means page URL, page path, page host name, and so on. So I want to get hold of the page URL that a user is currently active at and logging events with. So what I'll do, I'll create a named memory location that I call as data element. I'll name it as page URL because I want to store the value of page URL here. I'll get the uh, value of page URL and save it here. Just like we do in any programming language, we create a variable, we store value in the variable and we use the variable itself in any places we want. So at the end of the day, if I want to use the value of page URL, I will not go into the hassle of getting the page URL each time I'm, I'm trying to uh, fire a rule. I'll be just using this particular data element. So that being said, let's dive into what are the types of data elements that are available to us. Now, this is very subjective on the basis of uh, what is the extension that you're using. For, in, uh, for this tutorial, I am going to use the core extension that is available into the extensions catalog, and that can be installed with like very small number of clicks. So the core extension provides us with these many types of data elements that can be used. Okay, so as we can see, we have the three major components of Adobe Launch, namely that are rules, data elements and extensions. Currently, we are at the extensions tab and let's talk about the core extension that we're going to use for the data elements. So it provides us with certain default set of events, conditions and obviously the data element types that will be available to all the launch properties. And definitely you can go for other extensions as well. Let's take the example of uh, Adobe Client Data Layer extension. It's right here. And it provides the utility of effectively managing web page data intended to be used for marketing activities, basically the data layer events and so on. So let's navigate to the data elements tab. 
here you can see all the data elements that already exist and to create a new one we can make use of this button here simply click on that and let's start with the naming of a data element give it a nice name as per the convention that you follow in your organization and for the extension type we can choose among the list of the extensions that are already installed so let's talk about the core extension first it provides us with the a list of data element types that are usable so let's take up the the most basic page info variables so any website uh, will have a, a page that can have all these values it can be url host name path name protocol or better understanding url is this entire string whereas uh, the protocol is just the the few initial characters that is https it can be http as well depending on your implementation for the uh, host name it is basically the root domain and followingly you have the page path the query string parameter if it is followed by a question mark and also the subdomain so if we want to get the entire url we can just keep the url option ticked here and then we have the option of host name path name path name is nothing but uh, this part of uh, following the dot com string so mm -hmm. the the path for this url is slash blog slash uh, page name and then we also have protocol referrer and title referrer is nothing but the previous page that the user visited before coming to a page so if uh, if a user lands directly onto a page the page referral will be null and then title title is a string that comes up here you, you can see the current page title is edit data elements tags adobe experience platform data collection so uh, supposingly we leave it to title so we can just rename this as title now you can pretty much keep it anything not required uh, not a specific naming convention to be followed can be anything so now if i have sele selected it to be title automatically uh, this instance will hold the page title and i can use it in any place that i want like a rule or an extension so moving ahead with the other variables here other data element types we have the basic conditional value so it we can provide two operands to compare here now this can be a number it can be a string it can be anything so we have the option to select a data element as well and since we already created a data element for page title let me make, you make use of that so i've selected the page title and something to note here all the data elements are preceded and succeeded by a mod operator as you can see this is a convention that adobe data element uh, adobe data elements use to reference them if in if you are in a rule and you want to uh, pass the value held by a data element you follow this mod convention and then we can select the operator here currently i am looking forward to check whether a page title contains block or anything else it's, it's just a random value i'm considering right now and then i'm gonna leave this option to be ticked because uh, i want at least a value to be returned if in if in case uh, the condition is uh, if, if, uh, the condition uh, evaluates to be true so i want a certain value to be returned here so if the condition is true i want blog page as a string to be returned here and whereas if the condition is false i will give it as others it means uh, we are not on the the user is not on the blog page it is he or she is on some other page so if the page title is blog it will return blog page whereas if it is something else then it will return others and this value will be held by the data element name that we are using okay so let's move ahead with the other one that is a constant value so supposingly if you are using a multiplying factor to determine the platform fee that you may be charging and that multiplying factor is simply 
let's say 0.15 and then uh, we can just simply make use of this constant value during mathematical calculations or in fact if we want to send it directly to a marketing service or maybe to Adobe Analytics we can just simply make use of this constant value okay so next up we have cookie data element type so cookie is nothing but a piece of text that a website stores onto your browser so currently we are at the Google's Twitter handle and I've navigated to the application tab for the developer tools and in here I have clicked on this domain name for Twitter. So we have the list of cookies that uh, that are currently being stored on my browser and I'm maybe interested in getting hold of the guest ID here. So what I can do, I can just simply copy the cookie name that I want to get and then I can just simply paste it here. So each time this data element is processed, it will automatically fetch the value of the cookie uh, that is guest ID and store it in the demo data element. And then we can just simply hit save. So this was cookie. Then similarly, we have local storage and session storage as well. So we might want to get hold of the value. So currently it's blank, but yeah, if there's a local storage value, we can just copy the key value, maybe something like X, Y, Z is the key that we're trying to get from local storage or from the session storage as well. It's the same thing. Maybe we can uh, just uh, pass on the key value here and it will automatically fetch the value of this particular key stored in the session storage and pass it in this data element. Now for uh, uh, the other data element type, we have custom code. Now this is something that is not uh, not initially recommended it is always recommended to search for a data element that suits your need and you can skip the coding part because that 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 is why we use adobe for and then uh, but it, if it is the use case now and if it is something very custom then you can definitely choose to use this custom code the best part about adobe is we can use the javascript language to pass on the custom code and uh, we don't need to write the entire function. We can simply pass on small snippets of code as small as a single line code can also work here. So I'm writing it as var x equal to demo and then I'm just simply returning it. No hassle of defining a function or maintaining a scope, something like that. We can do that as well, but not required actually. So I've just returned. I've, uh, initialized x with demo and then returned x so whenever this code will be processed it will return the value of x that is demo we can just hit save button and the return value the output of this particular code will be stored in this data element then we have device attributes we have two things here screen size and browser window size so whenever the variable or the data element is processed we can determine what was the screen size or maybe the browser window size whether it was minimized whether it was maximized we can get hold of that value and store it here then next up we have dom attributes so let's take an example i want to get hold of the class name for this follow button that we have so i'll just hit the inspect button here and then i'll i'll just simply right click on that button and copy the selector from here and simply paste the element selector right here now i want to get the class name for that particular uh, css selector that i have passed that that's the follow button or maybe in the use case i want to get the uh, the the value of the alt element the alt uh, attribute that is being passed or maybe i want to get the src value of the link uh, that's embedded into it so all these can be achieved uh, from here then moving ahead with the the other one we have javascript tools these are a set of javascript tools that we can uh, make use of you can consider a simple one here that is length of string or array so let's take an example we have already created an element assumingly called cart update.item this is nothing but uh, an array, let's assume it. 
whatever the length of this array would be, it will be just stored in demo. It will be processed and stored here. Similarly, we have other functions as well, like join array, split to array, and even regex replace. Moving ahead, we have JavaScript variable. You can use it to get hold of uh, JavaScript uh, data layer that looks something like this. It will be uh, an object that is passed into the data layer that is the window and uh, structuring can be uh, as per the use case it's uh, not meant to follow a certain convention this is just an example so if i want to get the event that was pushed into the data layer i can just simply type here data layer dot event and automatically it will be fetched from the data layer and stored into the demo data element now we have local storage and uh, definitely it has support for local storage cookies as well as session storage so for uh, local storage we already know that uh, we can get hold of the key value and use it here then we have merge objects merge objects is a simple yet helpful tool that we can be utilized we can just pass on maybe two objects and it will uh, efficiently merge these two objects and then uh, without mixing up anything, without skipping anything, and even without uh, uh, overriding a required value if it is passed prior to the source object. So it's quite an efficient data element type that can be considered. The next up we have random number as the name suggests. We can pass on a range of minimum and maximum and it will just keep on returning a random number between that range each time the data element is processed. Then we have uh, runtime environment this is specific to adobe we can get the rule name rule id event type or even the direct call rule identifier that uh, that was present in the data layer while this data element is processed next up we have visitor behavior visitor behavior uh, is used to determine certain set of uh, behavior uh, that, the, that, that the visitor is executing maybe we want to get hold of the landing page string of the of the visitor or maybe we want to understand whether a user is a new visitor or not so in this case it will return true or false or maybe we want to get the session count of the visitor how many times uh, the visitor has initiated a session on our website so similarly and we have this uh, small uh, variable called query string parameter we can get hold of in uh, parameter that is present in the query string something like we want to get hold of utm underscore source or maybe medium something like that you can just get hold of it and store it in here so with this we come to the end of this video and we definitely have some new superpowers unlocked uh, see you in the next video and make sure you subscribe to the channel